Good day to you. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Um, it's kind of funny that we're reading in Corinthians and we, we read something here earlier in Corinthians chapter 4 verse 6 that I want to uh, kind of speak about. Paul, now remember Paul wrote this and Paul is a Pharisee. He was a Pharisee, okay? And they they followed the letter of the law and they also followed a lot of strict traditions that they added to the law and made them out to be as if they were a part of the law, these traditions. So they added to the law, okay? Besides just following the letter of the law, they added things to the law, to God's law, which they weren't supposed to do, okay? Now Paul here, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6, he says a little something here now. We're going to read this whole thing, but then we're going to point out one particular part. Now I have applied these things, I'm reading verse 6, now I have applied these things, that is the analogies about factions, I am reading in the Amplified Bible. Um, to myself and Apollos for your benefit, believers, so that you may learn from us not to go beyond what is written in Scripture, so that none of you will become arrogant and boast in favor of one minister or teacher against the other. So, the thing I want you, or I want us to look at, is so that, where he says, so that you may learn from us not to go beyond what is written in Scripture. See, these people were going beyond what was written in Scripture. They were saying, I am of Paul, I am of Peter, I am, a, I am of Apollos. They were trying to make their own make their own divisions, make their own, guess what, denominations. But he's plainly saying, we want you to learn to not go beyond what is written in the Scripture. Don't go adding things to it. Well, he knew all about it. He had been a Pharisee. Paul knew what it was like to be adding things onto Scripture as if, you know, as if you're adding Scripture to Scripture, but you're not. You're really just adding traditions of men. Now, I will tell you that we, ourselves, we're, we all have a little Pharisee in us, I think. <laughs> we all kind of want others to follow our way and follow our little traditions and little ideas. But we have to realize that a lot of times, <clears throat> a lot of times, our idea is just that, it's just an idea, or our tradition is just a tradition, maybe stemming from an example and something we do, which is fine, there's nothing wrong with that, until you try to make that tradition or that example, and you try to make that a law or a commandment, and you try to tack that on to the Word of God. Then, I, then I have a I have a problem, and I think we all have a problem with that. You don't want that, because that's not how things are intended to be. And I can give you two quick examples, and these might be offensive to you, but I don't mean them in an offensive way. I just want you to just, just think about this, and think about the scriptures we have on these things. If you look at, for instance, worshiping on Sunday, there is no scripture that commands us to worship on Sunday. Now, if, if you find one, please point that out to me. I want to be corrected if I'm wrong, but there is no scripture that does that. There is an example in Acts that they broke bread and they met on the first day of the week. We don't know. It's, it's The way it's stated is if it was possibly a routine, but we don't know that. They could have been meeting every other day all the time. We, we really don't know. Um, but... We have that example. And the reason we believe that that example is a good example is that the Lord rose again on the first day of the week, on Sunday. And that's why we treat that as the Lord's Day. It's a fine tradition. It's a very good thing. But to claim that that is a commandment and that is the only day you can assemble and worship is wrong. Or to say that if you don't assemble and worship on that day that you are automatically sinful is wrong. It's, that's not the intention. When Paul says uh, says later, and I don't remember where right now, uh, not, not to forsake the assembly, well, forsaking is totally abandoning and leaving destitute. It's not missing a week. Or, for instance, in some people's case, they have to work, and they have to work various weekends. 
you know, maybe not every weekend, but some weekends. And depending on their job, it's a necessary thing. And that's the way it is. And we need to realize that. And you can assemble and you can worship God. It does not have to be a particular day. Paul mentions too back in Romans that some people think one day is more important than another, but other people think all days are the same. And that there's nothing wrong with that. If you believe one day is more important than fine for you, that's fine. And for the, the others, you do not have to believe that if you don't believe that one day is more important than the other. Now, for my purposes, I like meeting on Sunday. I like assembling on Sunday. I like doing all that. That's great. But I don't like it becoming a law or a command because it is not. I think when we go to that extreme, when we're saying it's a commandment or a law that someone has to follow, we've gone too far. We're adding to the Word of God in a way that is not correct. And then we see that that is causing some issues with Christians now that we're under this, you know, this kind of, um, you know, the government's asking us all to stay home and not assemble and et cetera, et cetera, telling people and and teaching people for years this incorrectness, this that 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 it is a sin not to assemble, and that it is a sin not to be there every Sunday, and that they're wrong to not be there. Making that a commandment and a law when it is not, that is creating an issue with these people who've been taught that their whole lives. And now they're supposed to just not assemble, and yet they feel like that's wrong and sinful not to assemble. They feel like they're they're having that right taken away from them when they should have the liberty and the freedom to know that you can assemble any day of the week even with just two or three people and you can assemble you can worship God it's fine by yourself if need be you can be an assembly of one if you need to be there are times when that may happen and you may need to you know study Study God's Word on your own. We, we should do this every day anyway, really, if you think about it. Study God's Word on your own. Pr- pray. Have prayer with God. And thank Him. And be appreciative. You can still sing and worship God. You can do all these things outside of the assembly anyway. So there's nothing wrong when these things, when something unusual like this occurs in the world and we need to not assemble in the traditional example, but we can still, we still do a lot of online things. We're still doing a lot of other assembly and learning and, and studying and, and those are all great things. And there's nothing wrong with that. But see, we need everyone to understand that they have that freedom that it's not. You know, it's not a commandment. It's not a law that you must meet. You know, <laughs> you must assemble on Sunday. Um, it's not. And uh, there wasn't supposed to be. It was never intended to be that way. It's, you know, we have these good examples to go by, and that's what they are. We need to understand they're good examples. They're not commandments. Um, And, you know, they're not orders in any way. They're not requirements um, it is though extremely beneficial and it is essentially a requirement to assemble with others and to be around other Christians and the reason is that builds your faith and helps you but it's not a law and a commandment in how you do it all the time you know I mean maybe you're a nurse you work some Sundays you work some you know weekends and and so on those Sundays, you're not able to assemble on Sunday, but you still go like Wednesday or whenever you can. Maybe it's Thursday for your church, depending on the church. You know, these things, we need to make sure that people understand they have that liberty, that freedom, that they don't have to feel constrained by these weird rules and laws that don't exist anyway. So, wow, I'm really getting... Anyway, I just think it's very important that we understand that, that we not be Pharisees ourselves, that we not add these restrictions and these laws to the Word of God because they're not there. Do you know what day it was? I think, I think we uh, all know 
that Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper with the disciples. He did that at their meal. I think that was a Thursday evening. Is that right? I believe that was a Thursday evening. Or a Thursday anyway. I think it was the day before because Friday he was arrested and, and crucified. Or maybe he was arrested Thursday night and crucified Friday. Depending on how you look at that. Um, I'm a little, I, I'm not perfect on that. Uh, just that time frame. But nonetheless, that wasn't a Sunday. Are you telling me Jesus got it wrong because he didn't do it on Sunday? We don't do the Lord's Supper. I mean, we do the Lord's Supper on Sunday. And I've had people say that it's a commandment that we do it on Sunday and that's the only time we can offer it. But that's not true. That's never the way Jesus intended that to be. And he said, as often as you do this, you could do this daily, weekly, monthly, yearly. Uh, I would think more often is better because you want to remember Jesus and you want to remember the sacrifice he made. And we should remember that sacrifice every day. I'm not saying we have to do communion every day, but we, we should remember it every day regardless. But uh, it's a special thing that we do. Personally, I like doing it weekly. It, it helps helps renew that part of me that remembers and appreciates that sacrifice. It just helps refresh and renew that commitment to him who gave so much for us. So, But... But would I make that a law and a commandment to everyone else? No. No. And would I say that Sunday is the only day you can do that? No. No. Again, what if you were um, a nurse or a police officer? Now, I want Christians in these positions. I don't want a bunch of pagan people in these positions all the time. So if, if, if Christians have to work on Sunday some, that's okay. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, what if they want to meet, you know, there's a group of them that they want to meet like on Monday and just have a little service and communion. Would you say that's a sin? Because it's not on Sunday? I, I would say not. That is not a sin. There's nothing that says that has to be on Sunday and only Sunday. I don't know where these rules and, and laws come from <laughs> or where these commandments come from because they're not in the Bible. Now, if they are in the Bible, clearly, plainly point that out to me. But uh, I'm not seeing these commandments in the Bible. And, and we have, you know, we're under grace and we have a law of liberty and freedom that you could not enjoy under the old law. And that's the whole idea is that we wouldn't have these little nitpicky things where we would be condemning each other for these things all the time. That was the problem with the Pharisees. That they were condemning people and keeping them away from the kingdom of God rather than helping usher them in. And so we don't want to do that either. That's all I'm saying. We just don't want to get caught in that Pharisee type of thinking. So I just think we need to realize that as people, we have a tendency to want to add to and create little rules and, and laws, and, and there aren't. These commandments and rules don't really exist. So, we don't want to add, you know, like uh, Paul says here, so that you may learn from us not to go beyond what is written in Scripture. You know, don't go beyond what is written. Don't be adding to because it only brings about harm and it only brings about mm, dissatisfaction, unbelief. It, it, it just it causes harm. It causes trouble. That was the problem with the Pharisees and their, their way of looking at things and having people um, look at the traditions. There's nothing wrong with the examples and traditions we have. And there's nothing wrong with following those as long as we make it clear that those examples and those traditions are not, those are not commandments, those are not laws. Um, we have flexibility, um, and we need flexibility. Life happens seven days a week, 24 hours a day, and um, I want, we all should want Christians in these positions and in these things so that we're being taken care of by Christians, being protected by Christians, people who will understand, and certainly God wants that. So, 
So we need to realize that these these little you know these traditions are just that and they're good traditions and I like them and we should stay with them but on the other hand we shouldn't make them a point of condemnation for others we shouldn't make them a point of sin for another that's that's not the way it's supposed to be so I hope that uh, you understand where I'm coming from and I know this was kind of an odd scripture to go on but we had just read this and it just dawned on me that Paul's saying you know Learn from us not to go beyond what is written. Well, they were going beyond what was written, trying to create. They were basically trying to create denominations. They were creating factions of one was from Paul and one was from Apollos and one was of Peter when they were really all under Christ. So that was their example of going beyond Scripture. And I'm just saying we, we have a tendency as people to want to do that to add our own little rules and regulations and we shouldn't do that okay and I just gave a couple of you know I think I gave just a couple of examples of where we kind of do that not everybody does it but some people do we just want to be aware that those are not those are not really valid those are not valid commandments or rules or regulations um, First of all, first of all, we really need to worship God every day. And we should assemble as much as we can. And if that's more than twice a week or whatever, as much as we can on the days we can. Uh, and um, as far as communion goes, we should do that, you know, as often as, as we can that makes sense for us. It's more of a personal thing. Some people would do it monthly and some people would do it weekly probably. And maybe some people would only do it once a year, but... Yeah, I can't get behind that, but I mean, that's that would be a preference thing, okay? Um, for me personally, I think it helps me to do it weekly, so. All right, anyway, done. Done with this, I will try not to beat this dead horse, but let's try not to go beyond what is in the Scripture, not add to, and not, uh, you know, try to make our traditions into laws and commands for people, uh, because they shouldn't be. We have to be flexible. Um, we have people, we have to live in this world, and there's certain things that go on here that uh, we have to be able to, you know, we have to be adaptive. Like right now in our current situation, we need to be able to adapt. And we can't adapt if we pound things into people's heads all their lives that they have to do these things. They have to be here then. They have to do this now. You have to be just like this. Well, that doesn't leave any room for the, the freedom that we actually have, and it doesn't leave any room for them to adapt to, uh, you know, different conditions and situations that may arise. All right. So, again, I hope you understand where I'm coming from and understand uh, what I'm saying. I hope it is helpful to you. And uh, remember to be safe, stay safe, keep your, keep your family safe, and watch out for others. Remember that God loves you. <laughs>